Welcome guys. This is a segment I would like to call why we love blank, where we dive into certain subjects and go behind the curtains and see as to why we love them and endure them so much. Today I have Scruffy and we're going to be talking about why we love gaming. Well, I mean, as far as gaming and stuff goes, like I wanted to ask you, what was the age that you yeah. started gaming? Shoot. Um, I think I started... <sighs> That's a good question, man. I really don't know. Like, if you can... I think if... I... Yeah, I'm trying to think of like my earliest memory, because like it was when I was just getting my memories when I started gaming, man. Like, like I guess you could say my whole life, but... I probably started around six, five or six. Um, I vividly remember, I think I've been messing around with PC games, but I actively remember um, my uncle, he had a Nintendo 64 and I played Mario, the, I don't remember what Mario it was, but I played like one of the original Mario games on it, like nonstop. Couldn't ever, couldn't ever get past like the 10th level because I was so damn young, but but uh, I, I, I think that's my first one, yeah. So around around five or six, I think. I actually remember like one of my first memories. There's this game, um, if you can recall back with like Super Smash Bros, the hand. There was yeah. this game you played yeah. literally as that hand and you were like running around and stuff. I have zero context as to like <laughs> what? what you did, but I remember vividly just sitting down and playing that game and just not knowing what the hell was going yeah. on. And like, I remember that kind of sparked. And even uh, as to Mario as well, I remember playing 64 and just diving yep. into a picture and just hearing, Whoa! and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. what is this dude? And just falling <laughs> in love like immediately. So, um, yeah. I mean like what, um, what exactly do you feel like uh, is that thing that like interconnects us to the game itself like what what do you think is it the visual colors like what exactly do you think it is i think i'm about to really get deep here i think <laughs> humans humans as like a species we're designed to be social creatures we're designed to want to connect with one another and i think that whenever you play video games at least really early on like back in like the arcade days um the golden age of video games um people love the connections that they would get from it. They would play a story and they would know that their friends are also playing the same story and you can talk about it later in school. You can connect with other people in a way that a lot of other platforms don't have. Like, kind of like sports. Like, football is huge, right? Because everyone can play football. Yeah, They're not course. well, right? But they can all relate to it, right? Same with video games. Anyone can play video games and people can really relate to it. True. Um, I think with video games specifically, it's 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 like what's your favorite show and what's your favorite sport? Okay, combine those two. This is this is your favorite show that you can play. Damn, as that, a sport. That's a really you know good I mean? way to put it. So I think that with those two things coming together and just people wanting to be connected like that, mm -hmm. it's it's something that just lets people be connected. Yeah, and it's yeah. cool too because like you know thinking back like when games first started to have like achievements and stuff that mm -hmm. in like that mm -hmm. natural competitiveness already kind of kick-started even dating to back say. to like tetris and stuff or even pong that competitiveness kind of interlocks yeah. each other and like makes us want to be better than one another as far as the game goes and i feel like that's yep. really cool because it just sparks another layer of connectivity um mm -hmm. it's it's wild to me that it all started with such a simple you know thing especially being pong and it grows out to be what it is now um especially with like esports yep. and things like that and yeah. all that stuff but um i was gonna say that's the other thing is the competitive side of it yeah like, everyone's like i can beat you and you can't beat me like that could, it's, it's the whole like you know losing friendships over like rainbow road and mario kart you know what i mean like that that's a whole meme because it's show. so true yeah the blue it's show. so true oh man now like as far as you know playing single player games because personally myself i'm starting to dive into single player games a little bit more i've kind of stepped away from the multiplayer scene a little bit simply because i like the uh, experience of being able to discover how good you can be at a game or just even like diving into a story but like do you feel like what what's your thought process as far as like what video games do for a person 
video games do for a person as in like what kind of experience they get out of it yeah, or like, like what kind of dopamine hits they're getting from it exactly you know what i mean like what exactly do you think when you play video games pinpoints kind of going back to the previous question as far as like what makes us locked in what exactly um sparks the interest of being able to explore video games especially for someone who like doesn't play video games what do you think would be kind of like that missing piece that the rest of us already kind of locked into i think it's almost like what makes people get into gaming to begin with mm -hmm. you know what i mean at least that's, that's kind of what it sounds like to me but i think that whenever you're first introduced into video games it's it's a whole whole new world you can do anything you want, right? That's that's the appeal of video games. Is that you can live this crazy ass fantasy that could that. never happen in real life. Yeah, right. True. Like that, like that's that's the front of it. That's the that's the front. That's the tip of the iceberg, tippy top front of video games. Yeah, right? true. Be in your own fantasy. But I think after that, it's. I think it just comes back to connecting. You start connecting with characters like you do in shows. Yeah, true. You start to interact and and play in ways that you think would be better than others if you want to talk about the competitive side or you play in ways that you personally find really enjoyable. True. Um, I also think that for video games and in single player or multiplayer, it's a way that people can escape their daily lives, mm -hmm. either whether their daily lives are good, bad, they're suffering abuse, depression, stuff like that, or their lives are going great and they just want to hop on and just hang out with some normal people. Hell, freaking a billionaire kid could come on and hang with like some poor kids, most of us, and <laughs> feel a little bit more nice. normal, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I and yeah, I think that there's a, a big appeal there. What do you think, like, I know for me, like when I play video games and stuff like that, I've always been addicted to like the feeling of like, I've got so much shit going on that I can't wait to get home and just like play with my friends or even like play the single player games like now. So do you think that um, video games has become like a trope for people to just kind of like let go of their everyday lives and stuff like that? What, what's your take on that? I mean, I think video games is entertainment right so a lot of times people will entertain themselves in order to relax escape from the day uh relax um de-stress you know entertainment is a way for people to distract themselves it's a way for people to kill time it's a way for people to do all sorts of things you know i would actually ask because i feel like appropriate timing as far as being able to escape what is one of your favorite games that you would play that lets you kind of escape or even just kind of like have that connectivity with other people i mean the biggest thing for connectivity is you're going to be you're going to be in a certain community so i think being a part of a community no matter what the game is just being a part of a community and connecting with other players of that game that you can connect to them with through that game with is really nice yeah so i think for me personally i really like apex and i like the rust community that's why i keep making rust videos for sure uh scruffy underscore mark two check me out um <laughs> but I, I love the the rust community because i've played it since legacy of i like apex because i've played that since it came out yeah like it's the the communities behind it and the the scenes around it is always great for me and that helps me escape whenever i have other people to connect with yeah but in order like for the second part of that, I guess, the first part is just the general sense, but the second part is like truly escaping from reality. Um, I personally haven't played too many games recently that allows me to do that, to just to get lost in a story. I think I think the last game I really got lost in was uh, Remember Me on Xbox 360, back yeah. when I still played that. Um, it's been a while since I really got lost uh, in one, um, but I remember Remember Me, for whatever reason, I don't know if it was the main character that I played, the world design, what I had to do, but all of that just coming together just created a really great story that I thoroughly enjo enjoyed. And I think I replayed that game about four times. Yeah. Um, and it sucks because it's super underrated. Not a lot of people know about it. Um, but I'd highly recommend you go check out Remember Me. It's kind of old, but it's really good. You know what? YouTube, that's what it's for, man. I'm just going to Google that shit. <laughs> no, exactly. it's cool because, like, I have best friends that live across the world, right? 
um and it's it's so weird to run into people who still feel that like video games is like a dangerous which it could be in the wrong hands but in the instance that like dude video games brings people together and i just remember so many moments uh when i was growing up like being able to finally have an xbox 360 and xbox yeah. live and finally <laughs> obtaining that yeah being able to meet my friends and like i i remember being able to stay up uh when gears of war one came out and i was playing gears of war one with my buddy glenn who's been in my videos uh since the start and i just remember staying up till like three or four in the morning just laughing our ass off just getting achievements and things like that and just being able to again escape that reality and stuff like that even though low-key side note there was a roach that landed on my neck one night and that ruined it but we're not even gonna <laughs> dive into that because it's a whole other yeesh, like animal yeesh. no pun intended <laughs> but it's so crazy to me that you know you still run into people that uh don't believe in video games and they don't think that having yep. a best friend that lives across the world is even true when in reality yep. i think that people that are best friends on the internet are closer than friends that are in person which is oh, the yeah. weirdest thing because it just goes to show how like interconnected we become especially because uh i guess the internet or just gaming in general um and it just i've grown to have so much more respect for that aspect even though like we tend to rage and stuff like that during games it still yeah. allows us get to get lost in it and also find that community and stuff and then you find friends that you can then go on apex and stuff and run it together you know what i mean and yeah. it's yeah, exactly. such a cool cool concept and like I've grown such appreciation for it. I think it's rare and it's also very important too because we go through so much like bull crap throughout the day and like those are people that you depend on and stuff and I remember like not even diving yeah. into uh, the story but like I had a lot of issues when I was in high school with an ex-girlfriend that I won't even mention or anything but the simple fact that like while I was going through that I had my best friends there by my side and one of the things that stuck with me is the fact that like I was told go outside more find real friends and when i when i heard that it like struck something in me i'm like dude these are my real friends like they're they're physically real they're real people yeah exactly and yeah. like and a, another side story like something that's crazy and adding another extra layer to that friendship recently getting the vr was the first time i had the opportunity to see my friend physically in person yeah. kind of like Is in front fucking of crazy me. And it, dude, it blew my mind because not only do you see that person, but when you like fist bump, you have the um, the haptic feedback. So it feels like you're fist bumping your friend. So it's weird because he's 6'3 and I'm looking up at him. And like <laughs> the first thing I did was give yeah. him a hug because the, that like, oh, yeah. that like yearn to want to meet that best friend that you've never met in person. And like- It's that intimacy. That the, you the literal definition it. of intimacy. You're not, you Literally. don't want to fuck your bro, but you know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, the, no. it's the physical touch, you know, being able to hug fist bump it's high five so, that shit you it's know it's crazy. so much better and like yeah. you know if we were to step aside from the vr experience even then like let's say you crush it on apex or if you crush it on a certain game together and you have like webcams on you can like fist bump each other and it's such a hype moment and like it just feels so good and i don't think that enough people understand or have had the experience to be able to do that with somebody else and granted everyone's entitled to their own opinion and everyone's entitled to their own experience so if it's not for them it's not for them but to be honest like gaming is for everybody even like a one-year-old is playing on an ipad and enjoying the shit out of it and you have an 80 year old woman destroying kids on PUBG on a pc with five different monitors and she's live streaming you know like it's it's meant for everybody and i think that's why it's like the main appeal behind it it's just it's so it's so grasping to the person especially like cater like there's so many games that cater to that person and like it's it's just insane like that's the best word that i can think of is insane and like anyone can do it it's, it's insane like like whenever sports turn you down because you're not athletic enough or you know can't fucking go Boom. play pool you got mad and yeah you're fucking dizzy you can't fucking lift a weight but you can go home and fucking destroy anybody and their fucking mom on apex you know what i mean like it's <laughs> yes, sir. yes sir like i um i did want to ask you though and then like, not even like plugging your previous videos but you mentioned the fact that you play rust and stuff like that what was one of your most like interesting stories if you can elaborate because i know you had a 
video about like what was your favorite moment in gaming so i would love to hear that yeah um my favorite story by far uh whenever i was talking about the wholesome videos one um which there'll be an eye for whatever side of the screen um there the very very end of it this chick talked about playing minecraft with someone else like in person and i don't mean like cardboard i mean like they were on their phones but in person playing minecraft yeah they had um they she would visit these guys they lived like two states away up in maine or something like that and they would visit there every summer and so what they would do is that they would go there and they would bring their ipads they bring their phones whatever they could use and they would they would get the minecraft light version because they couldn't afford the actual minecraft version because they were like 12 and 11 at the time they would play the light version and with the light version you can't save your world yeah. so you can build this whole world fucking towns and banks and skyscrapers and yeah. all that stuff and as soon as it's done and, it's done yeah <laughs> and whenever you get off you're done so what they would do is that they would wake up really early in the morning and they snuck into their parents bedroom got their ipads got their phones and they went back downstairs stuck out and they literally just played the light version of minecraft all day long damn they built anything you can imagine they built it wow they built catapults they built towns houses banks skyscrapers mansions kingdoms they built everything and what they would do is that overnight whenever they had to go to sleep they wouldn't turn it off they would just leave it on and just let it run overnight Damn. so that the, that way the next morning they would wake up and just keep playing it but eventually you know they had to turn it off which was sad but it was okay you know because they had the experience there they connected through that and, and it was excellent Damn. but they had to turn it off and it was okay and also they knew that they would just do it next year damn dude you know how pissed i'd be to lose oh, all that i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm sure they were but you know, but still even is, like that experience uh, itself is so unbelievable because that just like it's a whole extra like layer of just like connection and love towards like, each other and then towards the game itself um and speaking of love towards games as far as you know like the heavy hitting franchises like gears of war halo call of duty right. we all kind of fell into like a little category throughout the times yeah. and the years that were kind of happening so what was one of your favorite games that, or like series i guess that came out throughout that time well speaking of categories typically you fell in, into halo yes, sir. call of duty or battlefield if you're one of those guys right halo yeah uh this is this is how i always work it down if you want a good storyline you play halo if you want just non-stop pvp military action call of duty there's no storyline call of duty let's be real yeah uh, true, and then true. if you want destroyable environments and a little bit more realism joe's battlefield yeah and that's typically how i always work it down for me i loved halo i love the story i love the story of master chief i have played every single one i still own my original xbox i can pull it out it's, it's right it's right back there but I have my original Xbox with my original copies of Halo 1 and Halo 2 on it, and I've played every single one since. Um, and I think for me, one of the biggest reasons, one of the biggest reasons I loved Halo, um, whenever Halo 3 came out, yeah. I got it probably five years after it came out, but I, I didn't grow up with a lot of money. Um, I got it, and the people that I met on there, the community that was on there, I... It was I just unmatched. Fell in love with it. Yeah, it was definitely unmatched. Yeah. I feel like Call of Duty was a really like toxic environment. And granted, yeah, Call of Duty was a lot more toxic. That was like yeah. that was gamer core to the extreme, right? And then I feel like Halo was more or less like the super competitive. I mean, granted, Call of Duty was competitive as well, but I feel like there was a little bit more of a friendlier competitiveness towards Halo. And then you had really sweaty people playing Gears of War. I don't even know if you dove into that, but I sure did. And I remember... I tried playing Gears of War. It was too repetitive for me. Really? I, I couldn't do it. It was the same thing over and over. I mean, to be honest with you, I will say, like, Gears 2 was probably my favorite one. And I, I already made a Gears video on behalf of, like, which Worth. ones were my favorites. Gears 2 was definitely my favorites. Um, but the overall, like, multiplayer and stuff, one of the biggest pieces that I took away from it was the glitches. Like, you would do, uh, <laughs> like, roadie running, which was basically, like, you would run backwards. And then there was ninja flipping, where you would basically put yourself on cover. And you would do a, like, button combination, and you would flip backwards. And it was the craziest <laughs> thing. And we would, and again, with Glenn and stuff, when we were staying up all night, we would do that outside of the map. And I remember the same thing before I got Xbox Live. Halo 2, the super jumps. I don't know if you remember diving into that, but I don't. I didn't oh, play much Halo man. 2. So if I can give you a little explanation, 
uh, super jumps, basically, you would go into a custom game and let's say like Zanzibar, for example, right? That big, the super duper tower, you would do this thing where you would like run against the wall or walk against the wall, turn around, jump on a certain little area and you would go boom and you would go flying into the map and, <laughs> and it was the craziest thing i i please look it up because it's actually really really cool uh, i'll show you guys a little clip here in a second but as far as like being able to do that it was just such another like piece to the puzzle as far as having fun with games either alone or with friends like being able to just do that stuff is just so much fun i remember i distinctly remember in halo 3 you could use the forge world to create your own world right and there were ways to glitch certain things so you could like phase it through walls dude so instead of it just like knocking up it would just phase right through you it fucking was so fucking it. nice ah uh, bro i fucking built an elevator with that Dude. i fucking took like two blocks with good like gravity lifts and like with like the shield and thing and it was like yep yep yeah. exactly yep. i had a little, I had a little <laughs> ghost you would flip the ghost it would hit the fucking whatever bubble and then it would trigger then a train of fucking it would put you it's, it's fucking so, complex as shit well that's all the questions that i had for you um i really appreciate Word. the fact that you had the opportunity to sit down and like discuss on why we love video games oh um, yeah man i know you guys love video games if you don't Fuck you, just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> if you do, please Rust. let me know down in the comment section down below exactly what video games you like. You know, text a little memory of what you guys uh, had as far as video games go. But uh, we will have a second part going over to Scruffy's channel. I'll have his channel linked down below as well. So please, please, please check that out because the conversation just keeps rolling. Um, but that's as far as we're gonna go as far as my interview. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, Stay sweaty.